Hallelujah. You put your hands together and welcome the man of God if he comes to bring the word. Y'all don't pass any encouragement too? Oh, what a joke, yeah. Encourage myself. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> That's in the Bible now. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. Amen? Has God been good to anyone? Has God been excellent towards us? Despite the fight, the ups and the downs. We want to see falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Amen? I submit. Better? Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Have your way in this house today. So gracious, so merciful, so kind, so patient. Wonderful God that you are. Oh, help us, God, to love you more. Have your way today. Do what only you can do. Take over. We praise you. Lovely, wonderful, giving God. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let's jump into his word today. Um, what a good God that we serve. Hallelujah. Anybody excited to be in church today? You could have been anywhere else. The children don't have a choice. They have to come. But the adults, we chose to be here. Amen? Amen? We got to do a... Uh, hey, Brother Devrin say, um, first time visitor, but we got to put a a limit on that. So if you don't come for six months and we see you after that, you have to stand up for first time visitor. Amen? Why are you watching a brother like that? Why are you watching? <laughs> but all the heads on him turning in. But glad to have you, my brother. His skin thick. I'm, it's always a blessing. It's a part of us. He's on a long vacation, but he bad, his back is broad and he can take it. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Alright, let's jump into the Word of God tonight. Let's see what God would say to us. Um, I've entitled today's message as we continue lessons on loyalty. Anybody blessed so far with this series on loyalty? Really, I've been challenged to be more loyal, to look at um, in a world that's blown away by talent, in a world that's so in awe. Talent is dime a dozen. Y'all watch those, anybody watch the singing programs, um, American Idol, The Voice, you see all these people, super talented, super gifted. If you go in the subway um, in, the, in New York, you see all these people, and talent and giftings are very common in this globe. What we strive to be as a people, we want to be a people that represent God. And as he is loyal, as one of his characteristics is loyal, we seek to be loyal as well. Anybody want to be like Jesus? Anybody know God is faithful? He's loyal. And that's why we can come here tonight and, and, and rejoice and lift our hands because he is faithful. And as his people, I want to challenge you that it's not in our nature naturally, but we have to determine in our heart to be loyal to God, to each other, to his institutions. And as we've been looking at loyalty now for maybe, maybe nine weeks, the last week we looked at the loyalty of Jesus on the cross. We've been journeying down the road of loyalty and treachery. And we've been looking at a chapter in the life of King David. Betrayed by his son, dethroned by his son Absalom. Betrayed by one of his, counsel his counselors, Ahithophel, who was a counselor for hire. Let me set the stage and we continue the story tonight. Betrayed by Mephibosheth, the grandson of a man on a crusade to take his life thinking he knew the person's heart towards him, only to realize how wrong he had been. I have in brackets here, he betrayed by Mephibosheth because in his mind, David 
in this chapter of his life was convinced by Zeba that Mephibosheth, a man he had been grateful to, had turned around and been disloyal to him. It wasn't real, but it was real in his mind. And I want today for us to continue this story. Thursday night we had Bible study, it was so encouraging that many have gone on and read the story and um, it's wonderful as we let the word of God soak into us as it's dear to make us better, to make us stronger. So if you would, would you turn me to 2 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 5, we pick up where we left last week. Sometimes you ask somebody, how's your day going? How's your week going? And they say, boy, I'm having a rough week. You ask them, what makes your, re- your week so rough? And they say, boy, I got a flat tire. My dog's sick. You know, fun's a little low. I thought about the, the last couple of days for King David in this story. His own flesh and blood turned on him. Men that had been in the battle, in the trenches with him, turned out to be fake friends. Didn't know who he could trust, who was for him, who was against him. And we can read, as we go through this story, we're challenged, I am challenged, that life can come with some real tests and trials. And, um, when we think we, we going through so much and things so bad we can't get laid to cell phone, I'm telling you, as we go higher up in God, the challenges and the battles that come our way graduate as well. Amen? Hello? <laughs> like it or not, amen or not, life comes at you with some real challenging stuff. You all look so holy and well dressed in the house of the Lord that I almost feel funny saying that because you know everybody in here is just on a mountain top on the mountain top <laughs> but let's look at what david a man after god's own heart look what he was going through in his life anybody been training in your life y'all don't look so that's why i have to ask sure anybody in the middle of some stuff right now no <laughs> Let's continue this story with King David, lessons on loyalty. And when King David came down to Bahurim, behold, then came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera. He came forth and cursed still as he came. So David's in a really bad place, and, and the Bible lets us know he came to Baharim. And I, I looked up Baharim to see what the name of this place meant, just to get some context as I read the word of God. And the word Baharim means low ground. I thought, as I look back, you know, I've turn there in the previous chapter, chapter, fi- chapter 15 and verse 32. It says, it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount, where he worshipped God, David, in the midst of the challenge, went up on the mountain top, worshipped God, cried before God. And it's a great example to us as we go through things. Don't leave out God. Cry out to God. He's an ever-present help in a time of need. But as I looked at this in chapter 15, he was on the mountaintop, Mount Olivet. Anybody knows what goes up must come back down? Hello? Can I tell you in here this beautiful Sunday evening, that life comprised of mountains, 
and valleys. Let me say it again. Life comprises of mountains and valleys. I think to myself how many go after things and wealth and success because many people want to live on the mountains of life. Hello? Let me tell you something. The people we watch on television with the 15 Mercedes, the helicopter, the, the big bank account, let me tell you, none of them live on a mountain. I don't care if they physically live on a mountain. Every one of us go through ups and downs. How you can say that, Pastor? Because the Bible says for everything in life, there is a season. A time to rejoice. Hello? I came in this morning to pray. I love how God speaks to me. In many ways, I was over there praying in the park, and I saw something like a mango was coming out. I said, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that mango season is coming again. But no matter how good the season, it's still a season. No matter how mango line up and that beautiful yellow and orange line off Market Street, just know by the time you blink, it's gone. Because everything in life comprises of seasons. I find that we want to live on the mountain top. I could see, thank God for mountains. But let me tell you, life comprises of mountains and valleys. In fact, when they put you up with a machine name, the EKG David, when they put you up on a machine, what, have, what comes up on a machine? Beep, boop, beep, boop. Anytime you see the line look like this, you're in trouble. Hello? Anytime the line goes straight. <laughs> because even that teaches us that life comprises of But I find we do a good job presentation. How are you? Blessed, highly favored on the mountain top. I can see so clear what it's all about. But after David went up to Mount Olivet, he found himself in Baharim, which is a low place. I thought to myself as I meditated on this word even in the Psalms David said I was brought low we rejoice so much saints in the mountain top experiences what a devil alluded to hearing God you see on the mountain top you can see quite a distance off prophetically you can see where God is taking you on the mountain top there is fresh air Holy Spirit flowing on the mountain top but what do you do when you walk through the valleys of the shadow of death David found himself on low ground he found himself in a low place. Anybody can relate? If y'all look so spiritual in the house, right? Any, anybody, y'all, anybody have ever been brought low? Sure, y'all look so good, you know? But the man after God's own heart, David, he came to low ground. I don't want to draw a little bit from not the mountain top but I want to draw a little from the low low valleys because sometimes it's in these low valleys that we're very vulnerable to the enemy beep boop beep boop beep boop is it interesting that Jesus had a powerful prophetic encounter coming up out of the river Jordan, baptized by John, heaven opened up, voice of God, Holy Spirit falling down on him, powerful starting of his ministry. And when you read the next verse, 
It goes from a mountain top. We, we, he goes after that. He was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Just flowing water, beautiful skies, voice of God, mountain top. Next verse, 40 days hungering, being tempted of the devil. Thought about Elijah, mountain top, Mount Carmel, calling down fire from heaven, licking up miracles, destroying the enemy, powerful place in God. Next verse, down in a cave, telling God, take my life. I know nobody can really, really relate, but sometimes life can change quickly. Yesterday, you were on the mountain top. Now you find yourself going through a desert. Be encouraged. You're in great company. For God's plan for us is not just to be high, high, high. For there are many lessons that we need to learn when we're brought low, low, low. Somebody say, Amen. Not one person will say, Amen. We're all alone today. Because somebody told us when we come to God, it's going to be all mountains. How is that going so far? Hello? Any vet veteran Christians in the house? Can tell me about the hi, hi, hi. Because sometimes we find ourselves low, low, low. I just here this evening to encourage somebody, because I know some of us in here never low. We're always high in the Lord. But David found himself on low ground. And just per chance you ever find yourself on low ground, I want to draw some principles, challenge you as I challenge myself. For assuredly, saints of God, we must go through mountains and valleys. Nobody will say amen. But God in his word, if, if King David went through it, who am I or are you? If Jesus went through it, who am I or are you to detour? And King David went down to Baharim. He was in a low place. And then came out a man of the family of the house of Saul, whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera, he came forth and cursed still as he came. Verse 30. Um, verse, verse 6. And he came and he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David. And all the people and all the mighty men were on the right hand and on his left. So picture with me, David got the news. He had been overthrown secretly by his own son, betrayed by his friends. He ran, disoriented, disillusioned, worshipped God, got up and realized he had to run and run for his life. And, and he, as he comes to this place, the Bible says, low ground, he, be, he hears cursing. A man by the name of Shimei came forth and began to curse. Not PG rated, don't know what kind of cursing they're cursing. Bad way in, in Bible days, but it wasn't anything glorious. Peter cursed as well. And this man came as Dave was in a low point. And he began to curse and cast stones at David. I want to encourage you tonight, saying to God, that the enemy doesn't play fear. He hits us when we're down. Hello? Wow. Can I say tonight that you know, some, sometimes when we go low, somehow the vultures, somehow the enemy of our soul, when Jesus was at his lowest, 40 days he hungered, that's when Satan says, here am I. 
I want to challenge you. We may not minute monitor our emotions, our spiritual life, but I want to tell you the devil pays keen attention to our body language. Hello? I want to challenge you. Though it's not bouncy, bouncy tonight, I want to challenge you, Satan, watching you to see when you're low. When you're funny and frowning, and you're going through the week, and the sound of worship not blasting so much in your house like before. Hello? Anybody been to a low place? Hello? Where you really feel for reading your Bible? Hello? Where your prayer life in the day where it's supposed to be? You are so holy in here. See, I don't want to be like y'all. But let me tell you, there's an enemy of our soul that looks and monitors. It's like every, those old time cowboy movie. As soon as the last drop of water done, all of a sudden the little buzzards start to come fly around your head. They say, dinner is served. There is an enemy of our soul who knows we're going to go through low places. And when that bell ring, he says, here am I. It is during the valleys of our life we have to be more. Some die in the mountains, some die in the valley, but so many die in moments of being brought low. When your joy brought low. Anybody joy ever brought low? Yeah, I mean, see, y'all look so holy in here tonight. Anybody understand what I'm talking about? Anybody joy ever brought low? That's so bouncy. Hello? And in the midst of that, when you feel it can't get no worse, screaming, shouting, bad word, and stone flying, here comes Shimei. I thought about this plot saying to God, and I thought to myself how oh, this was hatched in hell. How behind the scenes of even Absalom, there was a devil who strategically orchestrated this situation to bring down a king. Behind the scenes, David at a low place, and all of a sudden stones start flying. Can I encourage you? You don't want, for, you don't want to throw stone for stone with David. Because David takes stones and kills giants. David is not the man to, for you to go stone to stone. <laughs> but you see right now, David in a low place. And Shimei comes out casting stones at David, cursing David, a hurting king at a low place. And here comes the enemy to instill insult to injury. I thank God for the detail the Bible says here that David was surrounded by mighty men on his right and on his left. And I want to tell you too that it's good to surround yourself with mighty men and women of God. Listen to great teaching. You get around seasoned warriors of God. But as I thought about this verse, even though he was surrounded by great men and women of God, can I encourage you that sometimes the things that face us, nobody around us can help us. Hello? They can encourage you, they can talk to you, they can pray for you, but sometimes you have to go through some things yourself. And you can be surrounded by a big crowd and still be alone. There were mighty men on every side of David swords and shield and money and, inf and affluence and everything but none of that could help the situation here was a desperate king here was David at a low point in his life he had great people around him but in my heart in my notes I jotted down even surrounded by all these mighty men on the right and on the left there are just some things that you have to go through alone. That they just don't understand. For all our, art, our gifts that talking and, and eloquence, 
sometimes word fail you. Hello? And um, verse 7, And thus said Shimei, when he cursed, Come out, come out, thou bloody man, and thou man of Belial. I want to declare in the house tonight that Shimei was irate a long, long time now. Anybody believe that this, this happened overnight with Shimei? That this is nothing new on the inside. But he was now the opportunity presented itself. Shimei began to articulate what was brewing on the inside long time. You see, saints of God, when we get to a low place, I thought, um, not, not everybody out there think you deserve what God has ordained for you. I want to challenge you tonight that when God puts us and God bless us, not everybody out there think that we deserve that blessing from God. But sometimes they don't articulate it. But don't think for a moment that everybody happy to see your success. God had ordained David to be king. And Shimei who actually lived in this low place. There are some people that live in low places. Like how pigs love muddy, some people love dirt. And they wait until you get down low because this is the place that they fight in best. I believe that Shimei benefited by Saul's leadership. He was family to Saul. When Saul reigned, he had benefits. But now, as David ruled, he lost all of his benefits. When Saul was in power, he got perks. <laughs> and now that the government changed, May I suggest to you, and when I read this, I laugh. I took some notes, I laugh. You ever, why, you ever wonder why people get so passionate about politics? You know, sometimes the reason people passionate, so passionate about politics, because when this party in, they get plenty perks. And when the, when the party change, all of a sudden, they start catch bus. Because when this party in ruling, they drive government vehicle. Not even gas them by. But when government change now, all the perks cut off. And they have to stand up and catch bus and sit alongside sweaty people. That's why they get so passionate when they call in on the radio. It's not so much the lie, it's the perks gone. And I thought about Shimei. Why was he so passionate against David? Could it be that his family was out of power? And all the perks were cut short. See, why are you so passionate about politics? I love you, love the country, so? The national pride, that's what drives you. You ever wonder what drives them? Faithful every day on the radio station, up and down from morning till night, campaigning for them party, in season, out of season. I wonder if the perks have them, so. Hello? Or oh, is it national pride and love for nation? And I go into politics with y'all, y'all, y'all have get me in trouble. They, lo they love the nation so much. And Shimei came out throwing stones physically and verbally, assaulting David, cursing him. Bloody man, man of Belial. I remember when we looked at the story um, with Nabal and Abigail. And Abigail said her husband was a son of Belial. I remember that. He said, as his name is, so is he. And he was cursing David. You bloody man. Um, you get where you deserve. You're a wicked man. A long time. 
I'm so glad for what for this low time that you find yourself in. Verse 8. And all of a sudden, Shimei gets spiritual. And he says, The Lord has returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. Let me tell you, there are some wicked people with agendas and motives that love to tell you what God is doing in your life. Hello? Especially in low times. When you can't hear so clear, you're going through. In fact, this message may not even be for you tonight because right now you're on the mountaintop. But can I encourage you just take a little two notes because after mountaintop come valleys. Hello? It may not make no sense to you. This week may not be a good sermon for you. But take my foolish advice. Take a little few notes and put it in the cupboard for a rainy day. Put it in the deep freeze. Because when, when you find yourself in a low place, you have to be on guard. Because here Shimei comes forth now. And here Shimei says to a confused, hurting David, he says to him, this is God judging you. Hello? He invokes the name of the Lord. I'm talking about low places. Brother Java, you read about Job already. When Job was in his low place, where the man start coming around him and tell him. Hmm? The man that tell him, uh, 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 wait, tell the truth, Job. Is God who judging you? Hello? Because when you find yourself in a low place, you're not even sure up from down, left from right, and all of a sudden you wonder, and they are spiritual. Anybody ever wonder if God will judge them? Hello? In a low place. And you say, boy, no, no. I got to judge me. Mercy run out. And that, 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 those are the darts and the tarts of the enemy messing with our mind. Telling us God has forsaken us. And here comes Shimei and tell you, God will judge you. I want to say tonight, church, at a low place, it's not just physical. Sometimes we brought low its illness and sickness, but it's a low emotional place where the enemy comes and challenges everything you know to be true, even to the point that says, I gotta judge you now. God begs with you. And Shimei, this oracle of the Lord, this prophet of the Lord comes forth and said, The Lord has returned upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul. I know a Bible theologians in here. David shed Saul's blood. Hello? David shed Saul's blood. You know how much time David has Saul in cave right there in front of him to take him out. And David didn't touch him. David broken hearted because he cut off the man's garment. He said, David, boy, you're a better man than me. David cut off Saul's robe. He's broken. He cut the man's garment. Who was it that brought judgment on Saul? But you see, when you're in a low place, sometimes even the facts get distorted. Hello? Even your recollection, I want to encourage somebody tonight, it may not be for tonight, but maybe next week, next month. The enemy have a way to confuse us so much that we don't even know up from down. He can distort the facts. Make us wonder if we even love God or God even love us. Because even what Shimei was saying here wasn't true. David didn't shed, shed no Saul's blood. Time and time again, David had opportunity to shed Saul's blood. And David said, touch not the Lord's anointing. But let me tell you, when you're in a low place, even the very facts can get wavy in your mind. You can start to doubt the things you have faith in. And Shimei says, the Lord God is judging you for all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. The Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. And thou, and behold, 
thou art taken in thy mischief because you are a bloody man. Boy, let's call him Prophet Shimei, prophesying for the devil. Shimei came forth. There's a kind of wickedness that come in the name of the Lord. Hello? And in a low, I can't emphasize this enough. Just a few little tips for the low places tonight. I'm going to send you home. It is so critical who you listen to in low places. You want me to say it again? It's critical who you listen to in general. Because blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. But you see, when you start to go low, be careful who will whisper in your ear. You hear me? Your spiritual immune system weak. Hello? And when you're in a low place, you know, sometimes when your immune system low, any little virus and cold just bring you down. Anybody sneeze, you're gone. Not because the germs are so powerful, COVID-19, no, but because your immune system low. Hello? Right now, my wife, before time, my wife had to tell me, take your vitamin, take your vitamin. Right now, every day, who? Me have vitamin home by my dresser, home in my, in my shop, ah, and my dress. I'm going to forget some now from my vehicle. Because I like a knockdown, that, that flu knocked me down the other day, two weeks. I said, who? And I look around, and I was praying, say, God, don't give it to my children, keep me. And then I, I, I get a witness in my spirit, like, I wonder if my immune system was low. Can a body else in the house get it now? I'm going to thank God for answered prayer now. But I say, look, when well, last you take your vitamins. Up and down, chin, dad, all kind of travel. Grab something here or there. Could it be that my immune system just low? I'm here tonight to encourage you for the days you find yourself, your system low. And here come Prophet Shimei, distorting the facts. Can I tell you, that the enemy is so wicked and subtle that he, you can be in a situation with a wicked person like King Saul and he's playing it around and make you the villain. Hello? You know, oh Jesus, you know, narcissistic people can wicked and turn around and call you narcissistic. You hear me? Them they wicked now, but by the time they start to spin you around, you walk and say, oh God, I'm so wicked. Hello? Oh boy. Yeah, let me know she may yet, man. But they're out there. When they spin the narrative, you don't even know up from down, left from right, country from town. There are so many lies in this sentence. All the blood you shed, the house of Saul. And God has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, thy son. This is the work of the Lord. What you're going through right now is God ordained. Judgment. Hello. And all the mischief that happening to you now are because you are a bloody man. Saints of God, I want to tell you, see, this enemy of our souls is such a master strategist. How much we need each other. How much we need the word of God. Because none of us can are no match for Satan on our own. You hear me? <laughs> God is judging you. I remember once, let me get a quick one. I remember once, I was a young Christian living in Villa. I don't remember what happened, but I always go to church. I go to church Sunday morning, Sunday night. Um, choose a Bible study. I go to church Wednesday midweek service. Um... Thursday was men's meeting, Friday was premium. We go to church six times a week. Oh, I was in the house of the Lord. Church, most, that was me. And I remember a Sunday evening, I went in the morning. I didn't, I didn't go the night. I think I had some work to do. I don't remember what happened. I didn't go the night. I passed the corner. And a bunch of guys lived there. I say, Pastor. No, not Pastor. Machu, you know not have a church tonight? I said, not tonight. And one of them there, the loudest mouth, he say, God, I can judge you. Okay, okay, it's God judge tonight. And all the man there watched me and I said, I said, okay, God could judge me coming to go to church tonight. 
I said, well, last you go to church. If God could judge me for miss one night tonight, what God could do you? A year is now, many see you going to church. It's the double standard. God is so, you paint, they paint a picture of this God that if I miss a church, bram, judgment down on me. But they want to judge you for something that happened occasionally and that's their lifestyle. Hello? So if God could judge me for that and you do that every day. Hello? Be careful at the voices when you're low. Because here it is, Shimia turn prophet. Church is critical. The enemy strategically sent out prophetic Shimia is when you're low for this start the truth. For I assure you, God was not establishing no Absalom to rule no kingdom. Hello? And um, the verse 9. I like this guy. <laughs> then said Abishai, the son of Zuriah, unto the king, Why should this dead dog curse the Lord my king? Let me go over, I pray you, and just take off his head. I said, Boy, Abishai. Oh man, half of my own heart. People dead. Peter, sharp and sword. In the midst of the stone flinging, Abishai turn and tell David, say the word. Just say the word, and the boy head gone. Every pastor need a Peter. Every David need a what you name? Abishai. Abi say, sure, just, uh, he not tolerate the trippiness now. <laughs> I find, I find it. Anybody have a little Abishai in them? <laughs> Some of us have more than others. But Abishai say, done this nonsense. Me, I am not consuming this foolishness. This is my, this is a man of God. Because we are thinking about the emotions of David in the midst of all these accusations, in the, midst, in the midst of a low place. But can you imagine the people around David? The people that decide to be loyal to him, all of a sudden they start to see tweets and beeps and bobs, and they start to wonder, boy, David really wicked for you? Hello? In a low place, maybe in a the throne now, he's low. And all these aspirations, aspersions being thrown at him and accusations, the people around King David have a wonder. I wonder if I choose the wrong side. Hello? I wonder if, if God really raising up Absalom. But I thank God for a fully persuaded mind. I'll be shining in the stupidness now. I'll be shining no David, a man of God. And all the lies coming, they just bounce off Abishai. Like water off a duck back. Just shake it off. Abishai could discern and say, nonsense, see? Let's take off the boy's head. Hello? Can you discern? Abishai wasn't emotionally attached to the situation like David. It was his son. Abishai was matter of fact. Abishai see, a trippiness this. Right? Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? He could discern. In a world of tweet and beep and Facebook and facts and um, conspiracy theory, can you decipher the truth from the fake? Hello? Can you decipher the, even the thoughts that come to your mind about your pastor, about the lord? Because when you're in a low place, all kind of thoughts start come to your head now. Hello? When you're in a low place, you don't even know if the pastor fire you off or he against you. If God sent him out the devil, because you're in a low place. Huh? You are so holy. And the battle start raging in your mind. How this man that was so good to you, all of a sudden now he's the devil. Hmm? Because he's chasing you, because he rebuke you, because all of a sudden now in a palatable, it's time for wonder. Wait, wait, wait. One if Pastor Match really a man of God. <laughs> Somebody warning about me already now. 
And when you're on the mountain and a problem, look, everything going good, you're being blessed. But all of a sudden, now in a valley, you start to wonder, wonder if you're a man of God. But not Abishai. Abishai was firm in his conviction. Abishai knew who the enemy was. And he knew what direction to turn his sword in. Church is quiet. Verse 10. And the king said, Oh boy. Yeah. And the king said, What have I do? What have I to do with you, you sons of Zoraya? Abishai was a son of Zoraya. David turned around and said, What am I to do with you? So let him curse, because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David. Who shall then say, Wherefore? Has thou done so? The songwriter said, Whose report shall you believe? You yeah, realize that in Christianity, you have a term. You say, oh, I, I receive it. I receive the word. I say, God, go and bless you. you say, I receive it. But what about when you receive the wrong word? Hello? The difference between life and death in David turned around and Abishai wa cut off the man's head for fling stone and a curse and disrespecting King David. When David was insulted and disrespected on a smaller steel, a scale by Nabal, David get 300 men and go chop off, went on an intention to, to, to avenge his honor. Correct? Now this man of fling stone and across David to his face. The same King David. And he, he David say, leave him alone. God using him to speak to me. Hello? But you see, you can't see so clearly when you're in a low place. In a low place, you start to doubt what and who and maybe Maybe it's God judging me, the pastor. Maybe, maybe God. And the instrument, a man coming telling lies. You shed blood. This is what God is doing. And here David says, I, I, I look at this verse in several translations to fully understand. David turned around. What am I going to do with you? Let him curse. Because the Lord has said unto him, Curse David. David was in such a low emotional place. Verse 11. And David said to Abishai and to all his servants, Behold, my son which came forth of my bowels, seeketh my life. How much more now may this Benjaminite, do it. Let him alone and let him curse, for the Lord has bidden him. What do you do when you, you're in such a low place, you don't even know? The people that the enemy, the devil send them, are the same people you embrace it and calling them the Lord. Hello? Some. <clears throat> I want, him, I, want, I want to challenge you. Raise up yourself in the spirit. Raise up yourself in God. Strengthen yourself. Get deep in God. Because when voices come at you, you know how many people even know calling good, evil, and evil. Good, evil, and evil, good. Y'all know that? There are cults in Antigua. If y'all know, I want to break. Y'all know that cults in Antigua? And people in there saying that this is of the Lord. And when you go to them and try to bring a Bible, they say, no, 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 no. no. My prophet, my this, my that. They have the truth. You, you need to be able to discern the source of the voice that's speaking to you. Hello? Because here is David now in a low, low place. 
broken by the fact that his son, which came forth from his own bowels, now trying to kill him, he's so low. He said, look, a God who using this man to speak to me in my life. It's a dangerous place to be in. Wait, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. All of us have to go. All of us will find ourselves in valleys. But can I beg you, don't, don't build no house there. Yea, do I go through the valley of the shadow of death. My problem is some people tent and build house there. Hello? Yea, do I go through are going through, anybody going through something? You know what I mean? Are going through and are living here. We sang it tonight so powerful. Weeping may endure for a night. Joy cometh in the... Is it different if you're going through something? Brothers, how are you doing? When I'm going through something, keep going. Come on, I'm going through something. Because it's a season and it's tough. But I'm not camping here. But some people build in low the bar. You know, situations change. We make permanent decision on temporary situation. You know, life goes on. Oh, Jesus. But you see, when you're brought low, when you're brought low, you don't know where to go. You don't know who to listen to, who on your side. You rebuke Abishai. And you end us. Shimei. Hello? I pray. I, I, and you see, the thing is, if it were just the life of David, I could say, okay, but all of us are going to go through valleys. All of us, are one, go, our faith is going to be tested. Whether it be our family or friends, we're going to go through some things. Verse 12. Let me, let me send you. It may be next week I'm going to talk about the, the mountain because everybody can look more excited when the mountain comes. But let me tell you a little bit about a low place tonight. Verse 12. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction and that the Lord will requit me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went the way, Shimei went along on the hillside over against him and cursed him as he went and threw stones at him and cast dust. Hmm. All along the way, adding insult to injury. All along the journey. If, if the voice is in David's head, So hard. Anybody ever struggle with voices in your head? Nobody talk, right? That's why Joyce my book, Battlefield of the Mind, our bestseller. Because the same people who tell you, I don't struggle, they go go buy the book. Number one bestseller, right? Battlefield of the Mind. Anybody ever struggle in their mind? No, Pastor. I have the mind of Christ. <laughs> and um, all along the journey the relentlessness of the enemy to keep throwing darts at our mind cursing every step because when you're in a low place 40 days in the desert and you're hungered Satan come and start check his best shot for bowl you out Verse 14. And all, and the king and all the people that were with him came weary and refreshed themselves dear. It's not easy to go through 
a low place. But David and his men kept moving. And they were the non-stop assault of accusation and stones being thrown at your mind can make you become weary. How you can say that, Pastor? Because the Bible says, don't get weary in well-doing. Because the best of us can get weary. Anybody can relate to me or my heart? Oh, so something get weary. You do good, you do good, you do good. Do. Don't get weary in well-doing. But an hour for accusation, doubt, fear. You have all kinds of things coming at you. And you're still trying to walk the narrow path that leads to life. But sometimes you get weary. And let me tell you the truth. That's why sometimes some get yourself in the presence of God to get some refreshing. To hear the word of God, to bring some good perspective in your life. For throw up your hand and say glory, hallelujah. Get a little refreshing. Because the battle out there tough. Tough. Stone fire, machine gun. Brrrr. Can I fling stone now? A drone, a machine gun, they firing. Hello? Nobody, no one good battle in your mind. Ah, I can barrage your thoughts. You pull down while sudden some next food just come in your head. I tell y'all, I want to be like y'all. Y'all are so spiritual. People go on with all type of things. They're not facing no battle up here. And you, put, you read the paper and they tie rope around here. Same people now go on like if nothing. They're so immune and strong. And they go mix up some Clorox and something to drink. Because tart and vices and stone and murder them up here. But they put a good smile here. The best of us can get weary. That's why I forget together. Fellowship, refresh, come in the house of God, put on some worship, throw up your hand and say glory, hallelujah. Put on the garment of praise for that spirit of heaviness. It's more than just music. It's a refreshing to your weary soul. You hear me? Oh gosh. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me get a little at the end of the story. <clears throat> David kept walking. Let me tell you, saints of God, keep walking. Go through that low place. Weeping and joy for a night, but joy come in the morning. Nothing lasts forever. Tell your neighbor, nothing lasts forever. Because maybe they're asleep. Tell your neighbor, nothing lasts forever. You hear me tell you? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever been through something and you thought that was going to be the end of you? Huh? You're still here now? Let me ask you again. You ever been through something at the time you thought the world was falling and it could be the, the end of you and you're still here now? The devil is a liar. Keep on moving. Keep on trusting. Even when things around you are going haywire, I trust you. Lord, I may even understand what's going on. Where are you, God? But I'm going to keep on moving. I'm going to keep on dodging the stones that come. When I'm going to stand up and make the tarts and them stone me, I'm going to keep on moving. David confused, no? but he kept on moving. And he kept on dodging. I, I don't even know if she may hand me Ben. I mean, no. If he owe in that Abishai in the head of the guy now. In my imagination, if he owe in that Abishai, Abishai will say, I want to use the bathroom, David, I come in. People dead. Come here, tell us. Some of them know who for fling stone at the tunnel. Because some people heading the school on properly now. They know who for trouble now. Anyway. <laughs> David kept on moving and there was a refreshing. Let me show you what happened to Shimei. Give me 10 minutes and I'm going to send you home. Let me tell you what happened to Shimei. Go over to chapter 19. <clears throat> Very interesting lesson here with Shimei too. 2 Samuel 19 verse 18. David got through it. Chapter 19, Absalom died. God judged. The kingdom came back. 
And verse, 19, verse 18 of chapter 19 says, And they went over a ferry boat to carry over the king's household and to do what he thought good. David was being restored. God was bringing him back in his rightful place to be king. And guess who's right there when he's coming back in his place? Here comes Shimei again. All the time David was king, Shimei shut him out. They see you go through a little low patch and they say, that's it. I got them. But let me tell you, what goes up goes down, but what goes down goes back. Beep, bop, beep, bop, beep, bop. Then catch up on the way down, but then I understand it's not so the story ends are going back up. You hear me? Then catch up on the way down thinking they're going to die there, but our God is resurrection and life. And David going back now, vindicated by God. He didn't, to, he didn't have to do it. The same God that fought for him all his life fought for him again. The low period of your life is so powerful because the low period of your life exposes people's heart for who they are. It's the, the low period bring out the shimmy. You see how cockroach come out tonight? There are some people in your life they're a cockroach. If you want to see who they really are, go low. I'm going to say it again. Go low. When you're high, you can help them. Everything good, money flowing. They're right there smiling. Bless the Lord. Go low. And all of a sudden, the shimmy eye cockroach and then come out. Like Job friend, come out. Talk the truth, man. You know you're living a double life. The low part of your life. I said to my wife tonight before we came to church, as I, I meditated on this, I said, honey, remember when this person, that person left the church, this person, that person, all then left the church. I said, remember I was on my back now, with my back surgery now. Couldn't come to church, couldn't walk now. And when you're low, you see people come out and show you who they are. There are lessons in the valley you will never learn on the mountain. That's why God allows some mountain to show you and I beg you, when people show you who they are, believe them. You hear me? When people show you their cards of who they are, please believe them. Because some of us excuse them, make excuse for them. Anyway, let me go, let me go, let me get you home. And um, they're going back over. God fought the battle, chapters change, God on the rise, going back over. And Shimei, the son of Gera, fell down before the king as he came over Jordan. <sighs> he having a change of heart. <laughs> David going back up now, so you want to go back up with David. He threw himself down on the ground before the king. I just tell you a little while now. Sometimes we so want to believe them that when they come down and say sorry, I grab them back in our arms. Hello? I'm going to say it again. They show us who they are, but we so want. Well, <sighs> but you know, realize is the position, nothing changed with them except for your position. Here come Brother Shimi, I know, falling down before the king. Holy Lord, oh great king. His physical posture changed, but his heart not changed. Let me show you something, I send you home. So Shimi, I fell down before the king and said unto the king, Let not my Lord impute iniquity unto me, neither do thou remember that which thy servant did. Perversely the day that my lord the king went out to Jerusalem, that the king should take it to heart. You know, Shimei say, I say, I do me them back now. <laughs> they take them personal, they take them to heart, you know. <laughs> you, remember, you see that? I was drinking now. <laughs> I was at a room, make me do it. Hello? You see, Shimei, you see, they take it to heart. That little thing that I did that day, you know. <laughs> 
But let me tell you, verse 20, hear repentance. For thy servant does know that I have sinned. Therefore, behold, I am come the first this day of all the house of Joseph to go down to meet the Lord, the King. She may I say, having a change of heart. And I first come, my posture change, my words change. Look at David. Uh, he fed, he f- first this day to go down to meet the Lord, the King. Here verse 21. This is my boy. Here my boy, shout out. But Abishai, the son of Zuriah, answered and said, Shall not Shimei be put to death for this? Because he cursed the Lord's anointed. Shimei, you never forget the boy, no. Shimei don't say, look, he had to go perform a mantle. Me has spat on the. And somebody will say, but pastor, that's not very godly. We're supposed to forgive and forget. Shimei said to David, forget about what I did yesterday. May I encourage you that the Bible tells us to forgive. You can't show me where God tells us to forget. You hear me? Let me say it again. Forgive no means forget. If you forget, you're not going to learn from it. You're bound for it to happen again because you forget. You're a Christian. You're supposed to forgive and forget. Really forget? If you forget, what am I going to learn from it? By all means, forgive. But Shimmy, I tell David, forget that. That little thing that happened, that little thing you run behind a man, fling stone, you run behind a custom man, up and down the valley, and that's for water from that man. I have, rip- I have sinned. That's what he said. I have sinned. You know, boy, boy, I'm telling you, I, this young man, Abishai, Abishai said, shall not he be put to death? My sword's still sharp now. Let me done the boy. And here King David. And David said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zariah, that you should this day be adv- adversaries unto me? I'm going to say it softly. When you're in a low place, a very low place, you will call the people that God put in your life to help you, your adversaries. You will see the people that are good to you, that God places around you as your enemies. And the people that are adverse to you, you will take them in as your friend. Hmm? Up to now, David still tell Abishai, This day you are my adversary. Therefore the king said in verse 23, Thou shalt not die. And the king did what? Swear unto him. I'm going to send you home now, but let me tell you, when you're in a low place and you're just recovering and you're way up from a low place, the swear about nothing. I'm going to say it again. When you're going through, no make no, no sign no contract, no make no deal when you're in a low place. Or even you just start to catch yourself and going back home, no make no deal with nobody. No date nobody upon the rebound. Catch yourself first. Hello? The king swear unto him and say, me not kill you. Right? Good godly thing to do, right? Flip over with me. First Kings chapter 2. Let me tell you how the story done. Let me finish off the story for you. Very interesting story, this gentleman called Shimei. First Kings 2 and verse 8. And behold, this is, let me set the scene for you quickly. Here is David on his deathbed about to die. His son Simeon, his son Solomon about to become king. This King, before he go, he carved for, for Solomon. Solomon is beside his bed. He's telling him, the last will and testament, empowering him to rule, imparting his wisdom into his son before he takes his last breath. The verse before, he said to him, make sure you bless this man, because this man was good to me. 
when I was on the run for Absalom. And now I hear in my bed, I lying down, I reflecting over my life, the good, the bad, the mistakes I made. Here is what I want to tell you to do. And behold, thou hast with you Shimei, the son of Gera, a Benjaminite of Bahiram, Bahirim, which cursed me with a gracious curse, a grievous curse in the day when I went to Man Mahamin. But he came down to meet me at Jordan, and I swear to him by the Lord, saying, I will not put thee to death with the sword. Hold on. Now therefore, hold him not guiltless, for thou art a wise man, and knowest what thou art to do unto him. But his whole head bring thou down to the grave with blood. The same head that Abishai me want to chop off early up in the chapter. Hello? Now that David back in his right mind, on the throne, in a good place, he realized, boy, I made a mistake now. You ever make a decision in a low place and when you catch yourself, you wonder, really, I knock my head? You ever make a decision in a low place spiritually and when you catch yourself, you say, Tal, what was I thinking? Nobody? But guess what? The, the ink don't dry. The covenant don't make. You buy something, you shouldn't really buy it, no, but you buy it, you don't know, you say, oh God, we don't pay for it, we can't carry it back. David, the servant of God, as he lay on that bed, reflecting about his life and the mistakes he made, he said, boy, I should have been limb off my head a long time. But I made a bad choice in a low place. And he didn't want that to continue with the generation to come. Remember, he didn't want to fess up when he, when he met Mephibosheth. Remember, he didn't want to actually tell a liar, say, half for you and half for Zeba. He realized, I'm going to be truthful to the next generation telling the mistakes I made. Hello? You think we don't, we don't want to tell the generation that coming the mistakes that we made, the things that we did wrong. We want to present to them all the good that we did. Do this, do this. How much time you did the same thing you did? Hello? David wanted a better generation to come after him, and because of that, David expressed to them, I made some mistakes too, and here's one of the mistakes I made. I should have listened to Abishai and limb off that man the head long time. Have you ever come to a place in your life and look back and say, I should I should listen? Hello? Should listen to my pastor, listen to my grandmother, listen to my mother, but should listen? Hello? What took me years now down the road for catch myself? The Lord spoke to Abishai to me years before. I was in such a low place. I call Abishai my enemy. And now I realize uh, that was the word of the Lord for me at the time. That was the rhema word. Do the right thing, you're a wise man. I not tell you what to do, but chop off your head. That's it, right there. <laughs> I swore to him and told him I, will, I won't do it. But do me the favor and cut off your head, no? But let me tell you, hey, this Bible is sweet, no joke, no? It's like something out on Godfather movie. You hear me? Old man in the bed, call his son down and whisper in the ear, chop off his head. <laughs> All right, let, let, let me send you home. Let's, let me tell you the story in. <clears throat> and um, David tells said to Solomon, chop off his head. Don't work. Don't show no mercy. Solomon did what most children do. Disobey. Let's look at verse 36. Same chapter 2. The flip down 36. 
And the king Solomon sent and called Shimei. And limb off his head? No. And said unto him, Build a house, build thee a house in Jerusalem, and dwell there, and go not forth thence anywhere, any whither. For it shall be that on the day thou goest out and pass over the brook Kidron, thou shalt know for certain that thou sh shalt surely die. Thy blood shall be upon your own head. David showed grace, even if misguided. <sighs> Low place, give him a chance. <laughs> Get chance again. Now Solomon come and give him a chance again. Anybody know? Mm. Anybody, would, would anybody agree with me and say, but she may get plenty chance? Plenty. David said too much. Hey, I learn in, in life. He extends grace. Here comes Solomon now, disobeying his daddy wisdom, and say, Go build a house there, stop over there, and cross the river, make give you one next chance again. Everybody you know God gracious? You hear me? But the graciousness comes with condition and parameters. Hello? I'm going to take you back, but under this condition. Hello? You deserve death. I'm going to apply the grace of God, but I'm going to set some parameters for your function in. And if you function out of this, you're done. Because no matter everything has an end. God is long suffering now, but He's a fully. He grace not always strive with man. I look at Shimei and I thought, Lord, forgive me, but me don't limb off your head a long time. But God gives grace and rope. Anybody ever hear the saying, give them enough rope and they hang themselves? God just giving him grace and grace and grace. And now Solomon come and disobey daddy, which is not the first time children disobey their parents. And the child go and say, go and stay right there. Function in this parameter and everything will be all right. Verse 8, 38. And Shimei said unto the king, of, of, of course he would say this. The saying is what? Good. What else would he say? He said, boy, this, this sound good. And as my lord the king has said, so thy servant will do. And Shimei dwelt in Jerusalem for many days. He having a change of heart. But here verse 39 says, and it came to the end of three years that two of the servants of Shimei ran away unto Ashish, son of Makkah, king of Gat. And they told Shimei, saying, Behold, thy servants be in Gat. And Shimei, Shimei arose, saddled his ass, and went to Gat, to Ashish, to seek his servants. And Shimei went and brought his servants from Gat. And it was told Solomon that Shimei had gone from Jerusalem to Gat and was come again. And the king sent and called for Shimei and said unto him, Did I not make thee to swear by the Lord and protest unto thee, saying, Know for a certain, on the day that thou goest out, and walketh abroad any whither, that thou shalt surely die. And thou said unto me, the word that I have heard is good. Why then, big question, why then, I, I will preach, and I'm touching this, I will preach a sermon on this. Why then, has thou not kept the oath of the Lord and the commandment that I have charged thee with? God say, why you not keep the oath? I extend everybody say, my fully, judgment should have fall on you, but I extend grace in parameters. You made an oath. You tell me it's good. You tell me you're going to stay within the parameters of my word, but you're gone out there again. 
the king fed more over to Shimei. Thou knowest all the wickedness which thine heart is privy to that thou didst to David my father. Therefore the Lord shall return thy wickedness upon thine own head. And King Solomon shall be blessed. And the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. So the king commanded Benaiah, the son of Jodiah, which went forth, fell on him, and he died. And the kingdom was established in the hand of Solomon. Shimei's problem was that there was wickedness in his heart. Let me tell you something. I don't have no more verse than I have no more notes. We finish. I have learned and I'm learning this thing named life. As a leader to lead God people. If you extend grace to people, God exercised grace to wicked King Ahab. Jezebel and Ahab, he killed a man for his vineyard. I mean, remember that story? The man had a little vineyard. The king said, let me give money or let me give better vineyard for a little vineyard. The man said, not for sale. The king go home and cry a pity party. His wife Jezebel go and murder the man for his little family vineyard. When I read that, I got vexed. Well, I was reading the story of Ahab. I said, boy, years ago. And I said, enough is enough. God done him. Because the Bible said the anger of the law was kindled against um, Ahab for what he did. But the Bible said, Ahab cry out for mercy and God give him mercy. And me vexed with God. I mean, we don't buy it a couple of days well. I say, we don't want to read no more. God too merciful. This wicked king, God killed this man out of covetousness. And God reversed his judgment and give him grace. I didn't read the Bible for like a while. I was vexed with God. And the Spirit of God spoke something to me that I believe to be a truth. When God gives people grace and mercy, if the people really repent, it shows how merciful God is. That there's even grace for Ahab if he will change. But one thing that I learn, if people don't change, it's a matter of weeks, months, or years before they do it again. And all they're doing is postponing the inevitable. Okay, read two chapters later, and Ahab did that which was the sight in, wicked in the sight of the Lord, and God took him out. The grace of God that he extends towards us, the goodness of God is to bring us to repentance, not to give us a license to do it again. Shimei get chance after chance after chance for me alone and my head for fly long time in Javier, pray for me. But there was grace and grace and grace. And she may I take the grace. Step over the border. Because for all the grace he got, his heart never changed. Hello? And until your heart changed, it might even be three years you go up on a stretch. A pastor haven't done it now for three years. But because your heart not change, three years and one day, you can step over the border again. Your heart not change. And all you're doing is postponing the inevitable. You hear me? Let's stand. Shall we continue to sin 
that grace abound? Let me ask a question. Shall we continue to sin that grace abound? God forbid. Let me ask a question again. Shall we continue to sin that God grace abound? God forbid. I find this story so, so I've kept it like a long, but I find this story so fascinating to me. The twists, the turns, the lows, the highs, the grace that extend towards Shimei, that God could have judged him time and time again like how he dropped Absalom, and God kept giving him rope and rope and rope and rope. And Shimei take all the rope that God gave him and make tie. These things that are written in the Bible are true stories that God allowed to be put down that we don't have to make the same mistakes. As I close tonight, <clears throat> are you in a low place tonight? Not just a little bad day, but are you in a, a low place tonight? I want to pray for you not that God take you out, but that God, quick and a long prayer, that God give you the strength to go through the low place. Not that God pull you out, but God does give you the strength to go through. You don't have to die in the low place. I believe sometimes it's just a, like a jump start. God won't give you a little pushed just to tell you keep going because there's the light of day just around that corner hello if if that's you in this place tonight and you're at a really low place stones throwing at your mind really struggle really struggling the altar is open come up i'll pray you believe god just to give you the strength to carry you through this dry period As you come, just cry out to him. Say, God, I need that little strength. Because it's tough. Some people, some people won't, won't admit it because they're so spiritual. But you don't have to be ashamed. I always go through low seasons. And if, if, if you're not in a low season tonight, pray for your brothers and your sisters. Pray for those, even if they have a smile on their face because they don't know what they're going through. Life will... Carry you, I keep telling joy. Life comprises the high highs and low lows. And all of us won't go through them. The storm, rain fall upon the just and the unjust. Let's, just tonight, if you had a low place, if, if you've been a recipient to the grace of God, and you, you can say, Pastor, I should have been struck down a long time. But God, grace, keep coming to me. Tonight, I want to speak to you too, just a soft word of warning. Old people say, every day bucket go well. One day, one day, the bottom going to drop out. I want to challenge you tonight. Don't take, may somebody watching, don't take the grace of God for granted. If God keep coming through and giving you chance after chance, don't think that God is foolish or lie. He's long-suffering that men would come to repentance. And it kind of vexed me that the grace of God was there for Shimei. But maybe me, me name Shimei at times in my life too. Stubborn and not changing. But there comes a point when God says, in, where the king says, Enough is enough. If you're living a life displeasing to God in this place, if you're not saved, I want to beg you, give your life to the Lord. The grace of God. Past, they are trying to scare people. I'm telling you that God is not slack concerning his promises as men count slackness, but he's long-suffering towards men that his goodness will bring us to repentance. That's all. Let's bow our heads in here today. God, I pray. 
prefer strength today. Not physical strength and muscles, law, but strength to go through seasons. Strength to go through weary, tired. Not go through fast. You know, I'm, I pray for the weary today. A supernatural impartation to go through seasons of dryness. Seasons of challenge and doubt and stones and not knowing up from down and blaming myself and what I did wrong. And I pray today that you will bring clarity to the bigger picture. I pray, oh God, today that for everything there is a season. Every, for everything under the sun, there is a season. Help us not to make decisions, oh God, hasty or in the valley. But I pray that your voice be heard. Help us to hear the right voice in the valley. The voice of Abishai, the voice of your Holy Spirit telling us what to do. If you have to cut, cut. But let us hear your voice with clarity. Not what we want to hear. Not what we hear in an emotional time. But to hear your voice telling us what to do in these low moments of our life. When your spirit speaks to me with my whole heart, I'll agree. Speak tonight, Holy Spirit, with clarity. I pray against emotion and hurt and everything that would clog, every wax in the ear, every hurt that would dull our hearing, every bias, every, anything that would block us from hearing you tonight, oh great God, move it that we may hear your voice with clarity. Tell us what to do. In this place tonight, uh, I want you to make up your mind. Say, God, I'll do what you tell me to do and mean it. I hear to scare anybody. I just know there comes a day where the grace of God extends and goes no further. That God is long-suffering towards us. Show us our enemies, God, even if our enemy be the man in the mirror. Show us, oh God, so much confusion, Mephibosheth and Zeba and in our mind. I pray in this place, Holy Spirit, that you would uncloud our minds today. Not my will, but your will. A sense of wrestling tonight, even as Jesus wrestled in the garment. A wrestling of the wills. God is calling us, as even Jai said during the worship, to come to a place to choose. Choose in this atmosphere tonight. Will it be his will or your will? And if you put it in his hand, put it down and trust him. Don't take it back up. Make some decisions tonight in this atmosphere. Whose side are you on? If you're with God, you're with God in the mountains and in the valleys, in the good times and in the bad. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Don't be extremely opportunist. David, when things are good, then Absalom is your king, and then David again, when David come back, when opportunity presents itself, you shift. Choose you this day who you will serve. If God is God, serve him. Lord, I thank you for this night and for your word and for what you have done by your spirit, a word that eyes can't see. You're calling us, O oh God, to come to a decision. You're calling us, O oh God, to get our hearts right with you. Not just good actions for three years. And we punctuate and do it again. Every three months we go back. Past the minute, fornicate now. Three whole months now, but good. And then you cross that line again. It comes from a heart position that needs to change. You need to get a right understanding of what sin is to a holy God. 
Pastor, I'm going to masturbate for a while now. No. And then three years, three months, three weeks pass, and you're gone again. The problem is you don't have a right heart position to see what sin is to a holy God. And God, I just pray in this house tonight that you would help me and help your people. Maybe even tonight for someone who may be on a mountaintop. Everything good. I pray that they would, they would not disregard this word tonight. Because all of us have to go through valleys. I pray, oh God, that you would give us the grace for valleys. To go through doubts and fears and answers. And wondering where are you. Even wondering if you are against us. But that you will bring clarity. And if we, keep, if we keep doing good and doing what's right, you'll bring us out that we don't be. I pray for the weary tonight. The weary saints are under the sound of my voice. Who tired? Get, getting tired. Come in church, throwing my tithes, throwing my offering, doing all that. But I just uh, he, hear the word of the Lord tonight. Be not weary in well-doing. Have I said it and shall I not accomplish it? I'm not a man that I shall lie, says the Lord. Stand on my promises. Go through the season so you shall come out better on the other side. Hey, Spirit of God, say, I will not fail you. I will not forsake you. I am with you to the very end. But trust me. Trust me in the mountains and trust me in the valleys. Trust me for I am with you. I am with you, says the Lord. I have plans and purposes to accomplish in you. Keep going. Don't stop. Don't stop, says the Lord. Don't stop. Look not to the left nor to the right. Keep your eyes on me, says the Lord. For I'll bring you into an exceeding good place, says the Lord. Have I said it and shall I not do it? I love you, says the Lord. I love you with everlasting love. But I am a holy God and I cannot behold sin or iniquity. Turn from your way, says the Lord. Turn and live. Turn and live, says the Lord. Turn. Turn. I am a holy God, says the Lord. Turn. I'm focused on the posture of you. I'm looking at your heart. I don't see as men see, says the Lord. I see your heart. Purge the wickedness of your heart and live, says the Lord. So there is judgment coming. Oh God, I fear you today and I thank you today for your grace and for your mercy. For the many times, oh God, I've been the recipient where the devil, oh God, would have crawled on judgment. I have failed you time and time again, but your love has intervened. I pray that your love and your grace would bring my heart to a place, oh God, a posture, oh God, of real repentance. I thank you, oh God, for your grace. I thank you for even, though David made errors, you illuminated his thoughts and you brought things into perspective, even later in life. Lord, bring things in the right perspective to every heart in this house tonight. Bring things into alignment tonight, oh God, I pray. Help us see things, oh God, for what they are. Every bias, every blindness, every self-serving thought, Oh God, let it be brought low in this house tonight. Every wrong perception of you, every wrong perception that you are against us. Curse every shimmyai spirit, every shimmyai influence, every condemnation. I declare the words, I echo the words of David in this house tonight, that shimmyai must die. Shimmy, I must die. Every self-serving spirit, every opportunist, every, everything just bent about the agenda, not of God. Shimmy, I name, his name means his fame. He is, it means famous, his fame. Everything is about him. Nothing about God, nothing about the kingdom. Everything was about him. And I pray tonight, O oh God, that every shimmy spirit in us would die. 
everything in us that we is about us and our fame and we star lord is only one star and it's you you alone get the glory we're simply here to serve i pray against every shimmy i spirit under the sound of my voice in, in this place i pray make some decisions saying to god from the worship to the word is saying the same thing god is calling us to a place to make some decisions. Hear the words of the king tonight. I've been gracious towards you. Stay in the parameters of my word, for there is sure debt if we step out. Thank you tonight, O oh God, for strength. Not so much a change of situation, just a strength to keep moving through low ground, to keep moving, crawling, going through. For Lord, it's only for a season. Weeping endures for a night, but you must believe joy cometh in the morning. For the joy, he endured the cross. For the joy that was set before him. Just pray your strength, your power, your Holy Spirit. Strengthen us to go through this season. Help us not to make vows and commitments during this low place, O oh God. O oh God, that later we will live to regret. Help us to seek your voice. Give us the strength to see it through. And I thank you for your people. I thank you for this place. I thank you for us strengthening tonight for the weary that will leave from here, O oh God, refreshed just to keep on walking. The valley won't last forever. Bless your people tonight and the hearing of your word. May they bring forth fruit in our heart, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'll give God a praise tonight for his word and for his, his presence here with us. Amen. And as you go, encourage somebody and tell them, keep walking. Keep walking. Just keep walking. Not Johnny Walker, keep walking. Amen. Bless you. Bless somebody. Before